Welcome to Planet Microcap. I'm your host, Robert Kraft, and joining me today is Colin Bletsky. He's the COO at Must Grow Biologics. It's a publicly traded company. I got two symbols for you, MGRO on the TSX Venture and MGROF on the OTCQB. And Must Grow Biologics will be presenting at our upcoming investor conference, the Planet Microcap Showcase, happening at the Paris Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, April 30 through May 2nd, 2024. For more information, to register and attend to see the Must Grow presentation or meet Colin one-on-one, -on -one, please visit planetmicrocapshowcase.com. And with that, Colin, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Robert. How about yourself? Oh, you know, just getting after it per usual. So, you know, this is actually our first time doing an interview together. So can you start us off with that quick overview and history of Musgrove Biologics? Yeah, so Musgrove Biologics, we are a small um, agricultural technology biotech company based in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. And what our focus is, is to utilize what nature's given us. Um, we utilize different compounds in mustard seed. So the same mustard that we eat, um, the same mustard that's used in things like wasabi, things like um, that are in horseradish, other things. Um, we take these specific compounds and extract them in a very unique uh, way that's, that's all IP driven. We have our trade secrets. We take those compounds and put them together in a very usable, uh, easy to use form for farmers. And what that is able to do is this natural product, these natural compounds are able to help produce some of the very toxic chemistries that are being applied today um, in the U.S., but also around the world. So really, if you think of it, and I, I always like telling the story, Robert, if, if you like eating sushi and you have wasabi and you feel that, you know, the wasabi touch your tongue and you feel that burn in your nose, that's the same natural molecule that we take and put back into the soil, put back into grain bins or into storage containers to help produce things like nematodes, um, diseases, and other pests. And to put this in context, the agricultural space um, really is, is about a $300 billion annual turnover area of opportunity. We are getting pushed with more reg registrations, regulations, uh, public perceptions, many different things to change how we do things to be more sustainable. And, and that's where we come in. Uh, we provide a natural food grade product that you eat and we're able to help replace some of the, the key chemistries that are used um, and, and reduce a lot of that toxicity for humans as well as in the soil and the environment. Absolutely. So thank you for that overview. So now I, I want to better understand where this science came from, because I think most people are probably listening to this and be like, wait a second. So you're telling me that the chemical derived from mustard seeds or, you know, from things that spicy up our food is what is also helping protect food better. So love to get a little bit of the science. Yeah, so you know what, I would say mustards and, and brassica, so uh, mustards are part of the brassica family. They've been known for centuries to have specific properties to help uh, reduce pests and, and help many different things. And if, if you look at the actual chemistry that's in mustard and other brassica, it, it's actually anti-carcinogen, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial. So there's a lot of other benefits to it. Um, where our technology came from was actually back in the early 2000s, uh, Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada was working on this molecule. Um, a predecessor company to us um, licensed that molecule from the universe or from uh, Agriculture Canada and did some work with it. And they, they had sales, they did some good, good work, and they took that company up until about 2015 where they ran out of money. Um, that's where we came in. Uh, we were able to refinance, uh, go public, and actually really expanded our IP and our knowledge over the past number of years. So um, this molecule has always been known, but it's about how you do it and how you bring it to market. And, and that's what's very unique about us is the way we process it, the way we're able to extract it in, in a, essentially a sustainable way, and how we bring it to farmers is what's been changed. So um, it's not new, but it's what's new is how we do it and be able to able to get it in in a cost effective and, uh, manner and really in a usable form for farmers. So uh, it's been around for a while. Very good. So right now for the business itself, let's just, just looking at must grow itself. So there's it looks like there's two sides of the business. There's biofertility and then biocontrol. So it looks like biocontrol that that commercial grade product is is still in the works. That's coming soon. But then on the biofertility side, you have Terrasante. Can you describe that a little bit for us, how it works, who you're selling it to, the, the whole bit? Yes. So Terrasante is, is new to us as well. We just uh, received uh, two registrations in the U.S., one in Washington, one in Oregon, and we are awaiting other registrations with other states. Um, it does offer a unique opportunity to help 
and uh, really help farmers with uh, in the organic space and conventional space with their soils and with their crops. So essentially what it is, it, it's mustard extracts, but in a different form to go in and provide the key nutrients and, and really to help build up the soil. And, you know, that's one of the key things about natural products and our natural product, when it's applied and it breaks down, it breaks down into simple sugars, proteins, carbohydrates, which actually feed and help feed the plant as well as the soil microbiome. And if you think of the soil, almost like our, our gut as a human, um, you know, our, our gut has many different microbi microbiological um, organisms. They have many different things in it that help you break down food, help you utilize different nutrients better. And, and essentially, that's what our technology does with Terrasante. So Terrasante is new for us. Um, this, will, this year, 2024, will be the first launch of it. And the way I see this, and you know, uh, Robert, I, I am a farmer. Uh, I still have land in Saskatchewan. And, and you typically, as a farmer, want to see something work and, and work with a product, understand it before you really go full on and, and really take a lot of your acres and a lot of your uh, penetration. So 2024 is going to be already more so about working with farmers, working with the key influencers, the, the key distributors to show what the benefits of this technology so that we can ramp up and do a lot of marketing. So think of 2024 for us as more of a large scale marketing activity where we're still selling in, but really ramping up for 2025 uh, once we do see more registrations come. So yes, yeah, Terrasante is one area. The, the biocontrol side, TerraMG, is the, the other one where we're working on, and that's really to control, help control nematodes, help control disease, and help control other pests. And put it in perspective, nematodes, um, they're small parasitic worms, cause about $100 billion per year damage across the globe for food. So it reduces food production significantly. And products that are used today really to control nematodes in most cases are extremely toxic. So with that product, um, you know, we have our formulation set. We're working on registrations in the U.S., in Canada, uh, working now through our partnership with Bayer across Europe, Africa, and Middle East, working in South America. So we're really expanding that through our partners, our global partners, uh, right around the globe and, and moving it quickly. So those are the two key areas for us, um, biofertility and biocontrol. And we continue to evolve our pipeline. And then there's some other spaces, more so in foodborne, uh, sort of, sorry, post-harvest food preservation, really looking at reducing sprouts and potatoes, reducing disease in, in root and tuber veggies, and also working with another partner, Janison, on looking at the overall, um, essentially, food waste area. Um, so looking at our pipeline, it's, it's really, once again, taking this natural, organic, food-grade substance, putting it in different forms, and utilizing it to help replace areas where chemistry has been used for decades. Got it. Yeah. So that was actually your, that was a perfect segue to my next question because some people might be hearing all this and like, okay, ag tech, get it, you know, new way of, of, of helping to produce food, reduce toxicity within our food. But for, just for the layman, you know, what would you say your products are hoping to replace? I mean, is this hoping to replace like pesticides, you know, like love to hear your thoughts there. Yeah. So um, it's, the, our main product is looking to replace specifically things like fumigation products. So um, in the past, a product called methyl bromide was used, which was extremely toxic to the soil as well as to humans. Um, there are other products being used to date um, that are already banned in Europe, already banned in other parts of the world that are still being used in the U.S. And they are highly toxic to humans and to uh, the soil and to the environment. So we're really looking to replace those. I'm not going to say that we're going to be able to replace every string of chemistry, all the other small molecule chain chemistries that are being used today and in, the, in other applications. Where we're really focused on is the soil applied fumigation products that go on pre-plant that have a tremendous to toxic effect to the soil, to humans, and to the environment. And that's where we're really targeting it. Um, and that offers up a fairly significant, sizable marketplace for us as well, right around the globe. And you have to understand those products that we're trying to replace um, in most cases, like I said, are already banned in other parts of the world, but they're still being allowed to be used in the U.S. and Canada and, and even into South America. So um, the goal is to try to replace those. Um, take a product like ours that's natural, that's organic, that's benign to humans, that's safe. Take it in because of our production process and how we process it at the same price point as a chemistry. And we also have data through our partners um, right around the globe showing the same level of efficacy. So essentially... You can take a natural product and just strictly replace the chemistries. And, and that's what the goal is once we do get our um, our registrations through the, the government uh, authorities. 
Absolutely. So I look, I have a thousand more questions about this and, uh, but you know, we're trying to keep this tight here today. So yeah. my final question for you here, you know, from what you can tell us, and you've alluded to this a little bit in some of your answers, you know, what would you say then are some of must grows 2024 goals for 2024 that you're hoping to achieve from what you can tell us, of course. Yeah. So uh, I would say, you know, if you look at them and, and we've been very clear about our goals from 2022 to 2023, now to 2024, 2024 is now about getting to that commercialization stage. Um, not only with Terrasante, but um, we did sign a, a deal with the, uh, with Bayer Crop Science for Europe, Africa, and Middle East. And, and that was a significant progress for us having a large company that putting their name and investment behind driving our products forward in that area. Um, we are looking to sign additional commercial goals. We are working with other partners in different parts of the world. So we do believe 2024 will have that other catalyst. Um, so that's one, commercialization. Number two would still be to continually improve our process. We, you know, we, we've done a full-scale production run last year. We had success. We know we can produce a product, and now it's about even making it better and refining it even further um, to improve our, our costs and improve everything along that line. And then the third area I would say um, would also be right around the technology side. We still have a tremendous opportunity to understand what is in mustards, um, other brassica, and really mix and match and start looking at different IP. And uh, to put it in context, about three years ago, we only had 23 patents. And as of uh, recently, we're, we're coming close to what, 125 to 130, depending on um, you know, the, the numbers. Um, so we've really expanded our technology portfolio. And, and this is key. So that's there. And I, I say the final goal is also to keep and maintain the, uh, I would say we've been very running this very lean. We've been running a very tight ship. Um, we have 51 million shares outstanding. So a very small tight capital structure. Um, we're about a $70 million Canadian market cap. Um, we have a two year cash runway for us, which is extremely important to get into the sales and move that forward. And I think a big thing with this is as management, we continue to be owners and, and management insiders own about 21% of the organization. So we are vested. Um, a lot of my personal wealth is invested in must grow and we continue to see that. And, um, you know, we keep saying this, we, we believe we have about uh, 12, we can count 12 people that would have an, an individuals and, and, and offices that would own over 70% of our, our, our shareholder base. So keeping it tight, moving these things forward, getting commercialization and continue to expand. And, um, you know, agriculture has been around for forever. It will be around forever as people need to eat, but we need to be get better as farmers, as the industry, we need to get better. And, and that's what we believe we're doing with Musgrove and our technologies. Very good. Well, Colin, with that, where can our audience go and find more information on Musgrove Biologics? Uh, www.musgrove.ca is where you can find most information. And if there's a, if you'd like more, um, hit the contact us button and you can get a hold of us and also sign up for newsletters. But um, as you mentioned, I'll be at the show in, in Vegas. I'm really excited to present and, and tell our story. I think we have a great product. I think we have a great way to change agriculture and, and also change it for the better, but also not impact farmers. And, and that's one of the things I, I always like to do is put my farmer hat on and make sure what we're producing is going to be applicable for their operations and, and make it easier. And that's, um, we're really excited about what we have and, and uh, discussing our story. Very good. Well, Colin, thank you so much for joining me today. Really do appreciate it. Good luck. Stay safe. And I'll see you in Vegas. Awesome. Thanks, Robert. Thank you.